In this video, I go over three ways of entering code into a worksheet. The first is using a 2D input, which allows us to use the palettes. The second is what's referred to as often red code, a new courier font based format. And the last is my preferred format. And what you might see in the examples is using the code edit region. Let's get started. The first way we're going to look at adding some code is through an execution group. If you have a small amount of code, this is probably the easiest way to do it. All programming consists of starting with a larger problem and breaking it into smaller problems. And so for this, I'm going to create a procedure and the procedure is what we're going to enter here. So we'll call this my pros colon equals. It is a procedure, so notice when I hit PROC, it turns black saying this is a keyword. We're going to pass it two bits of information, A and B. Now I have to shift enter so that I stay within the execution group. I'll do another shift enter and I'll put over a couple spaces, one, two spaces, and print my pros quote A, B, and uh, S. Okay, so this should print those thing bits of information. Now I'll shift enter, shift enter, and in my calculation, I'm going to say S is defined as an integral. I'll go over to the integral button. The integral will go from A tab B of X shift two squared times E to the minus X tab X. And that's the end of that command. Shift enter, shift enter. S is another sum we're going to do, uh, but this will be a standard sum. N tab one tab B tab O A squared. So these are all just examples. Go to the go right, and again put a semicolon to end the command. So now we have our procedure has one two three commands and what we're going to return and I like to use the word return shift enter shift enter uh, space space return s divide by s uh, go to the right and then we have to say this is the end of our procedure so we'll say end pros and when you do it will write it out okay now in the process when you do it this way, the first thing it will do is recognize that S less and big S probably are not something that you want from the general environment, but rather you want them to be locally within the procedure and only within the procedure. So we'll go back to our procedure, uh, put in shift, enter, shift, enter, space, space, local, S comma S, put a semicolon there, and when I do it again, and now the warning has disappeared. So let's test it. Output colon equals my pros two three. It does it. It prints it out two three little s. Nothing has been assigned to at little s, so it just puts out s, and there is the output from our calculation. So notice that when it returned the procedure, what it understands was the procedure. Instead of using integral signs, it used the command INT. It wrote out everything explicitly, including the sum. Let's repeat the same process, but what we'll use is again an execution code, uh, execution group, but with what's considered red code. So red code is the same. All it really is is text code. So I'll click this on to make it into text mode. And when I say my pros, you notice immediately that the procedure is written in this reddish color. It is a procedure. Nothing is highlighted. A comma B. Uh, shift enter as before. Uh, shift enter space space local. S comma S because we realized we had to do that. So the advantage here is it's all the spaces are clearly marked out and everything is in courier new font. Shift enter, shift enter, print my pros comma A B S as before. Shift enter, shift enter, S colon equals I N T X squared. Now we have to use the commands int uh, 
times exp of minus x comma x equals a to b. So you have to memorize the commands. You can't use the palettes. Big S colon equals a sum of a squared comma n equals 1 to b. Um, shift and shift enter. Again, we will return s divided by s and we will end pros. So there's a, again, I'm trying to tell you there are several errors that I've made in doing this procedure and the whole point of this is to show where the why each system does a better job of finding those errors. We'll hit enter. It again repeats out what we said. If we had changed this to a colon as before, we won't see the output. Let's test it. Output colon equals my pros to three and we get the same result result as before. Now, there's a problem in this coding, and I don't know if you can see it, but one of the variables we used in here was x. Well, x is never declared as local, and I never got a warning about it. So if I say x colon equals 3, okay, don't think anything of it, and I go back and I say, oh, output colon equals my pros of 2, 3, it returns... It turn, x becomes 3, but then there is an error because what's happened is x has been used from here and x is defined as 3. And so now we're basically trying to do an integral of 3 from 2 to 3, and that doesn't make any sense. So this is why we go to the next version of entering code. Personally, I think even though red code is very traditional, I think it's the worst way to enter code. Now let me introduce the way that I find is the most informative way of entering code, and this is through what's called a code edit region. You can insert a code edit region. Let's put it at this execution group by say select code edit region, or what I prefer is to actually put it over this icon here and enter insert the code edit region like this. It is like red code in that it will be all text and spaces are obvious. However, you will notice that the keywords for the coding will be highlighted. So let's put A and B, shift enter, and you'll notice that it'll even give you some spacing. Personally, I think it's spacing is too much, but that's okay. Uh, local. S comma big S, shift enter, shift enter, print my pros. Even text is highlighted in a different color, A, B, S, semicolon, shift enter, S, colon equals the integer, integral of X squared times EXP of minus X. Notice it is giving little red marks. That means there is an error. There is a construction problem. We don't have the end of a procedure. Okay, so that's an error, but that's okay. We haven't gotten to the end of entering all the code. X equals A to B, semicolon. Uh, big S is the sum of A squared uh, for N equals 1 to B. And we're going to return S divided by S. And again, key programming code words are highlighted. Shift enter, and now we can end our procedure by putting in the end pros. Okay, and we know if we hit enter and we get that. Notice we also get gray lines. Now gray lines tell us there is a warning. And if we put our cursor at the far left hand side, it says real variables were used before they were assigned a value s. Oh, look, we tried to print S, but we have never defined it. And so, in fact, if we just eliminate it, that should eliminate that warning. But wait, there's still another warning. Here's the other warning. Put the cursor to the far left-hand side. Oh, the variables were used in the global names, but not declared X. That's why X would we defined it on the main sheet uh, could be changed and it would screw a procedure. If we declare X locally, look at that, that warning disappears. Let's go down to this one. This one says, oh, the same type of problem. We used the letter 
variable n, but we did not declare it locally, so it's going to use it globally. That might lead to problems, so let's add that as well. And that gets rid of that warning. We still have another warning. What's this warning? This warning says the variables were used but never assigned a value x. That's okay because we're just going to use it in this uh, as a dummy variable in this process here. So let's hit enter and let's do our output. In fact, let's again, let's test it now. We can say x is some value and the output is defined as my pros of 2 and 3. And it goes through, does exactly what we hope it to be. So in the end, a code edit region is like an execution group. You have to hit shift enter to e enter everything within the codex, but the keywords are identified and it provides both errors and warning checks. For situations where I only need a few lines of code, I tend to use just the 2D input, which allows me to use the palettes. For half page code entering or full page code entering, I tend to use a code edit region. For very large projects, in fact, 85% of Maple is written in Maple code, you use Maple code files through a workbook. Subsequent videos on programming cover the programming manual chapters that comes with the Maple software.